Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel for yet another tutorial. Today's video is going to be on a light and airy summer tank. So let's go ahead and quickly gloss over the materials that we'll need to create this project. For our yarn, I will be using a fingering weight fiber. This is a really gorgeous blend of 50% merino wool and 50% silk. And for all of those who are going to ask, I will be using Jody Long's Delish. To coordinate with our fingering weight yarn, I will also be using a 4.25 millimeter crochet hook. If you guys don't have a 4.25 you could just opt for a 4.0 and the last few bit of materials that we'll need to complete this project of course is a measuring tape this is just going to help you guys get the perfect measurement for your own body so i highly suggest using this and of course we need some scissors to help cut our yarn and a darning needle at the very end of our project to weave in our ends so those are the basic materials that we need let's go ahead and dive on into the tutorial in order to create this top we do need to take a few quick measurements so firstly i'm going to use my measuring tape and measure from the wide portion of my torso. For me that is going to be the breast area so I'm going to take my circumference measurement and divide this in half. For me that's going to be 17 inches so what I want to do is create a starting chain that reaches to that 17 inch length. I have my slip knot on my 4.25 hook and now I can begin creating my chains. So I'm just going to yarn over and pull through, yarn over and pull through. And for the starting chain, we do wanna create this in multiples of two. So very simple, just chain an even numbered amount. I've just finished up my starting chain and as you can see, it very comfortably reaches from zero to 17 inches right here. To begin working on row one, we do need to set up our first row. So what I'm going to do is yarn over and place a double crochet into the sixth chain from my hook. So I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five, and six. And at my sixth chain, I'm just gonna turn my work over to find that back loop or that back bump, insert and work a double crochet. So I'm going to pull through that loop with three on, yarn over, pull through two, and then once more yarn over and pull through two. And for this pattern, the chain three at the start of our row does count as a stitch. And at this point I can chain one and skip one stitch yarn over and work a double crochet into the next stitch. So for this row one, we are pretty much working with a simple mesh pattern. So here is my next double crochet and we have that chain space in between. Once again, I'm gonna yarn over, chain one and skip one stitch and work a double crochet into the next stitch. And repeat this until the end of your row. I've just finished up row one and this is what your mesh pattern should look like. Let's go ahead and move on to row two. For row two, what I'm gonna do is chain three first. One, two, three. And from this point, I can go ahead and turn my work. So what I'm going to do is yarn over and look for our next available double crochet, which is right here. And I'm going to work two double crochet directly into this stitch. So here is my first double crochet just like so and then one more time yarn over going right back into that same stitch and work my second double crochet and at this point I can continue working two double crochet into each available double crochet so again I'm just gonna be skipping over the little chain section right there and working directly into the two top loops on our double crochet and work two so there's one and here is two. Again, yarn over, look for your next double crochet, which is right here. Insert and work two double crochet. So I'm coming up here to the very end of row two and at this point this is what your stitches should look like. I still need to finish out my very last two double crochets in the row. So again I'm going to yarn over and look for that chain three section. Now we do have this first initial chain which we do want to skip because that is part of the pattern. So pick up the second available chain from your hook. It's a little bit tight <laughs> and finish out my last two double crochet. So there's one, I'm gonna go right back into that chain space and finish out my second double crochet. So this is the end of row two. To start working on row three, I'm going to chain four, two, three, and 
four, and now I can go ahead and turn my work. And for row three, we're gonna switch back to that mesh pattern that we worked for row one. So at this point, I can yarn over and skip the first two stitches in the row. So I'm skipping one and two, and inserting my hook into the third stitch available, and I'm gonna work a double crochet. So there is the start of my row. And now I can chain one, skip one stitch, and double crochet into the next. And again, chain one, skip one, double crochet into the next. And we're just gonna be repeating this until the very end of the row. I've just finished up row three, and at this point, this is what your piece should be looking like. Now, as you can guess, row four is just going to be a repeat of row two. So what I'm going to do is chain three. Ooh, one, two, and three. And I can go ahead and turn my work. I'm going to yarn over and skip the first two stitches in my row and insert my hook into the third stitch. And here I can place two double crochet. So there's one, and here is my second. And just like row two, we're gonna continue working with two double crochet into every double crochet available. So I'm skipping the little chain one spaces right there and inserting my hook into the physical double crochets. So here's one, going right back in for my second double crochet. And again, two double crochet. There's one, here's two. I've just finished up working on row four and at this point I'm loving how my piece is turning out. So at this point, we're just gonna continue to alternate between rows two and three until you can get this front panel to reach underneath your armpit. So I'm just coming up here to the end of my 16th row and what I wanna do now is change out to a secondary color. I'm still working up towards the base of my armpits so I still have a few more rows to add on. So here at the end of my 16th row, I'm working with the two double crochet into each double crochet. And as you can see, I still have one more double crochet to go, but here at my very last stitch to change out colors, I'm gonna work the first half of my double crochet. So I'm gonna pull through those two. And now that I have two loops remaining on my hook, before I yarn over and pull through, I'm actually going to attach on my new color. So I'm just going to loop it over the end of my hook and act as if this is the yarn over. And then from here, I can pull through both of those loops and finish out that double crochet. So at this point, I'm just gonna set my work down, tie off a little knot with my new tail so that I can tie these two tail ends together. And now that that knot is nice and secure, I can go ahead and drop off the orange color and then pick up my new yarn and then I can go ahead and carry on with the pattern. So here, following for the mesh row, I'm gonna chain four so there is my fourth. And at this point I can carry on with the pattern. So I'm going to skip the first two stitches in the row, work my first double crochet into the third stitch, chain one and skip one, work a double crochet. Chain one, skip one, work a double crochet. Okay, I'm back and as you can see, I worked up a total of four rows with the yellow color. So I have one, two, three, and four rows. And once more here at the very last stitch, I still have one more double crochet to make and this is where I'm going to change out my colors. So I'm going to work the first half of the stitch like normal. And then when I have two loops remaining on my hook, I can go ahead, pick up the primary color, loop it over my hook as if to yarn over and then pull through those two stitches to finish out the row. All right, so at this point, I have worked up a total of 23 rows, and this is how tall I would like my tank top to be. So let's go ahead and give you guys some quick measurements because I know you are going to ask. For the 23 rows, I have exactly eight and a half inches. And again, this is at the point where it starts to reach my under armpit area. So at this point, what I wanna do is use two stitch markers 
to mark off a designated amount of stitches at the center that we are going to leave untouched. And what the stitch markers are going to represent is essentially the start of your row and the end of one row right here because we're going to work upwards to create kind of like a little triangle strap right here. We're gonna leave off the stitches at the center. And once we are done with this little cup here, we're gonna tie on a new strand of yarn over here and we'll be repeating those same steps to start the row here and end the row at the stitch marker. Because everybody has a different shape and a different body size, I figured I would also give measurements as to how wide of a neck opening I'm going for. As mentioned earlier, my panel does reach to 17 inches across and for the middle section, I'm going to leave off exactly four inches and for the four inches that equals one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight stitches in the middle that are left untouched with one stitch marker placed in the double crochets on both sides. So at this point, let's go ahead and move on to the straps. Picking up here for row one of the chest section and also the straps, as you'll notice, we're going to be doing a repeat of row two because we just worked the little mesh pattern. But here for this very first row, we need to create decreases not only for the armpit sections, but also decreases along the chest area. So here for row one, what I'm gonna do is chain one and I'm going to slip stitch into the first chain area. So I'm just going to go into that open chain space and slip stitch. Looking here at the next stitch, which is the double crochet, I'm going to slip stitch into this next stitch. And once again, here at this next chain section, we're going to add our third slip stitch in a row. And now one more time into the third double crochet in the row, make one more slip stitch. So we just worked four slip stitches in a row just to kind of carry and travel our work over to this third double crochet. At this point, what we can do is chain three, two, and three. I'm going to yarn over and look for the next double crochet in the row, which is right here, and work one double crochet on top of that double crochet. And now at this point, I can carry on with the regular pattern. So into the next double crochet, I'm going to place two double crochet. So we're kind of going back to the standard pattern here. And then looking at the next double crochet available, two double crochet directly into that stitch. And I'm going to carry on with the two double crochet pattern until I have two double crochets left in my row. I'm coming up here to the end of my first row and as you'll notice, I have one double crochet right here and then the final double crochet where my stitch marker is placed. So what I'm going to do into these last two stitches is work two double crochet into the second to last stitch. And now here at my final stitch in the row, I'm just going to be working one double crochet. And that is the end of row one. Moving on to row two, what I'm gonna do is chain four at the start of my row. And now I can go ahead and turn my work. And once again, I do need to create a little decrease section at the start of my row, as well as here at the end. So what I'm gonna do after my chain of four is yarn over, and I'm going to skip one, two, three stitches and insert my hook into the fourth double crochet available. And work your first double crochet. Now at this point, I can carry on with that mesh pattern, chain one and skip one, double crochet into the second stitch, chain one and skip one, double crochet into the second stitch. Carry on with this pattern until you have three double crochets left in your row. As I'm approaching the end of row two, you'll notice that I have one, two, and three double crochets left at the end of my row. So I'm going to chain one like normal, yarn over, and I'm going to insert my hook into the second to last double crochet. So I'm going to disregard that chain of three and insert into that second to last stitch and work one double crochet. And that is going to be the end of row two. As we are disregarding this chain of three, we are essentially creating another decrease right there. So let's go ahead and move on to row three. For row three, I'm gonna start with a chain of three and turn my work. And to go ahead and work on row three, we are doing a similar repeat of row one. So what I'm going to do is yarn over, find the second double crochet in the row. So I'm skipping the first, inserting into the second and working one double crochet. 
And now at this point, I can move on to that pattern of two double crochet into each double crochet. So looking at that next stitch, work two double crochet into that same stitch. And again, looking for the next double crochet and work two. Approaching the end of row three here, I have one and two double crochet remaining. So what I'm going to do is yarn over and insert my hook into the next double crochet and work one double crochet. So this is what the end of your row should look like. To go ahead and crochet row four, we're gonna start off with a chain of four. And for row four, we'll be repeating row two. So I'm going to yarn over and skip the first three double crochet in the row and insert my hook into the fourth double crochet and work one double crochet. And now we can move into the mesh pattern. Chain one, skip one, work one double crochet. Chain one, skip one, work one double crochet. As I approach the end of row four here, you'll notice that I have one, two, and three double crochet remaining. So I'm going to chain one and skip one, insert my hook into the second double crochet, and finish the row with one double crochet. So once again, I am leaving off the chain three at the very end of the row. We're just going to disregard that for our final armpit decrease. And as you'll notice, there's a really nice gentle slope right here to carefully fit our underarms. So let's go ahead and move on to row five. For row five and onwards, I am no longer working any decreases along the edge of my panel where our armpit is, but I will still continue to work a few more decreases along the chest area. For row five, we're gonna start off with a chain of three. And now here for row five, I can do an easy repeat of the regular pattern. So looking at the very next stitch or the very next double crochet, I'm going to work two double crochet into that next double crochet. This is very repetitive, I know. <laughs> Again, looking for the next double crochet and work two. Repeat this pattern until you have two double crochet remaining at the end of your row. Here for the end of row five, I have one and two double crochet left. So what I'm going to do is yarn over, insert my hook into the second to last double crochet. So essentially our next double crochet and only work one. So at this point, I've crocheted up a total of seven rows with the decreases along the inner neckline, and this is what your project should be looking like. So moving onwards for rows eight and up, I no longer wanna have any more decreases, so I'm gonna show you guys how to set up that row. For row eight, I'm gonna start with a chain of three instead of a chain of four. And now I can move into the mesh pattern, so I'm going to place my very next double crochet into the second stitch in the row. So I'm going to insert, and work a regular double crochet. And now I can chain one, skip one, work one double crochet, chain one and skip one, and work one double crochet, and finish out row eight with your mesh pattern. I'm gonna start off with a chain of three, and now I can move into working my two double crochets into every double crochet. So there's one, and here is my second. Again, looking for the next double crochet and working two stitches into that double crochet. And as I approach the end of row nine, I'm only gonna be working my very last two double crochet directly into this stitch right here. So I am going to disregard that chain of three at the start of the row. And this is just gonna help the top to look a little bit more cleaner. Let's go ahead and show you guys how to start row 10. I'm gonna start off with a chain of four and because we took the time to set up the row prior to match the rest of the pattern, we can go ahead and work this top like normal. So after my chain of four, I can yarn over, skip the very first two stitches in my row, and insert my hook into the third stitch, and work my next double crochet. Chain one and skip one, work one double crochet. Chain one and skip one, work one double crochet. 
Continue adding on repeats of rows one and two from the body section until your strap can reach the very top of your shoulders. I just got done adding on a few more rows to my straps and in total for the entire decrease in strap section, I have 13 rows. From the very top of my strap to the base of my decreases, I have exactly five and a half inches of length right here. And then reaching from the very top of my strap, to the base of my tank top, I have exactly 14 and a half inches. So these are the dimensions of my top. At this point, now that I finished up the 13 rows on one strap, I'm gonna go ahead and repeat those same exact steps over on the other side. I do wanna make sure to leave a super long tail because I don't wanna to have to reattach another strand of yarn as we are seaming the top of the shoulders. So make sure that you leave a very long tail, give yourself enough wiggle room and mistake room Go ahead, tie off a knot, and we'll come back to this strand later on. I've just taken the time to work up on my second strap, and of course it is matching all around. So this is what one of my panels is looking like. And at this point, you're gonna wanna take the time to crochet yourself a second matching panel. Thankfully, I've already gone ahead and done that. So here is my second matching back panel. And at this point, it's time to align them. And from here, we're going to be at slip stitching the very top of the shoulders closed right here, as well as slip stitching the side seam of our panels. So we're just gonna be starting here at the very bottom of the tank top and slip stitching our way through both of the panels until we reach the corner of our armpit. I'm gonna start here at the very top of my straps and pick one of the strands to work with. So to start off, I'm gonna be picking up both two top loops on both the front and the back panel like so. So you should have four loops on your hook right here. And I'm just gonna take one of these strands, yarn over and pull through all four loops. So I've just brought up that one loop. At this point, I can go ahead and chain one. And in order to connect the two panels together, what I'm going to do is grab the back loop only on this front panel facing me. And I'm also going to be grabbing the front loop only on the panel furthest away from me. So in theory, these are both the innermost loops on both of the panels. I'm going to yarn over and slip stitch those two panels together and pick up the back loop only, so the innermost loop. And here for the next stitch, I'm going to grab the innermost loop, so the front loop only on the back panel. Yarn over and slip stitch very loosely together and repeat this all the way to the very end of your row. And this is how that inside seam should look on your tank top. So at this point, I can go ahead, sit down my work, cut my yarn, tie off a cute little knot, and all that's left for the shoulder seam section is for me to go back and weave this end in. But that is one strap all completed. So this is the wrong side. And then this is what the right side of the panel will look like. So I'm gonna go ahead and repeat this on the other strap. Now that I have both of my shoulder straps attached and ready to go, the very last step is to attach the little side seam to our tank top. So what I'm gonna do starting here at the very corner, I'm just gonna pick up the very base of that chain stitch. And at the same time, I'm also gonna be picking up the very base chain stitch on the other panel. At this point, I can yarn over and pull through my yarn. Ooh. So I've just pulled up a loop and at this point I'm going to chain one. Now for the rest of the side seam, I'm just gonna be slip stitching through both of my panels. And because I use double crochets, what I'm gonna be doing is working two slip stitches for each double crochet. For me, that's just a really good and safe rule of thumb. So what I'm gonna do is just pick up a little bit of strand of yarn on the next little section, slip stitch very, very loosely. You don't want your work to be super tight. And then slip stitch and pull through both of those panels. So I'm just gonna be repeating this all the way up the side seam and I'm going to stop at the very corner of my tank top. 